I'm Aidan Bussey. I'm a student here at Sarah Lawrence focusing in biology, um, and my particular interest is in reproductive science. I'm Ken Walsing, um, teaching physics. It's actually kind of funny because I did not come to Sarah Lawrence to do science at all. I think I remember this. And when I was looking at schools, I was really just looking at schools with strong writing programs. Um, and I came here and I was like taking a fiction workshop as my first year of studies. The first um, science course that I took here was spring semester of my first year. And then the next semester, I took your supers class. Supers is, is, is super fast, super small, super cool, which is this lecture um, which is really intended for students who don't have a, a lot of uh, background in the sciences. It's a totally open course. It's highly conceptual. You don't really go through those nitty-gritty calculations that you do when you're studying something like general physics with calculus. When I came here, I actually was not intending to take any math or science um, because I'd had some less than wonderful teachers in high school. For me, it's just, it's, it's almost unimaginable for me to think of you coming to Sarah Lawrence and saying, oh, I'm going to do creative writing and I'm not taking <laughs> any science because you seem to be such a natural. What I really didn't like about the high school treatment of science was the sort of really heavy emphasis on rote memorization. Whereas like, with, even with like general physics, mm -hmm. even though there are like a lot of formulas that you have to know, they all sort of connect conceptually and abstractly in this really elegant way. Well, you know, I hated physics in high school, too. Yeah. I hated it. I mean, I can imagine being in high school really enjoying science, but not being able to really do science or explore science in the way that a scientist would. I also took a couple of science, technology, and society courses because I, I felt like those were really important for someone who was going into medicine or science to sort of have. It gives you more sort of philosophical outlook on everything. Right now I'm studying with Sarah Wilcox um, and my conference project is on the history of legislation surrounding assisted reproductive technologies as well as a market analysis of oh, wow. fertility clinics yeah. and international adoption. So that's something that is really relevant to a very small sector of science and medicine that would not be required or probably in, even included in most mm -hmm. pre-med or pre-science programs. Right, absolutely. Um, and I think that things like that are what's really valuable about Sarah Lawrence is that you get to sort of look at things in a way that's a little bit different from elsewhere. And you get to craft the way that you want to do that. Yeah. Right, the different sorts of perspectives that you, you want to have or that you want to explore. The faculty members in the sciences, we all know you, right? Everybody knows Aiden. You can have your Don, who can be a great advisor for just sort of your general education at Sarah Lawrence. But it's also very easy to strike up the kind of relationship we have and sort of directing you to talk to, you know, various people in biology to get more, um, you know, focused advice on how you get into a lab job or mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So I think it just, I mean, that's one of the nice things about Sarah Lawrence too, that these relationships can just sort of pop up. And I think one thing that's really cool about Sarah Lawrence is that you can develop these really close ties to faculty without that sort of like official mentorship status. Yeah. When you took modern physics with me, it was just, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, mm. intense, hour and a half, my God, an hour and a half, <laughs> twice a week. And I remember so many times when we would be talking about sort of the fundamental structural work that had to do with the very beginnings of quantum mechanics and you would sort of veer off on, into particle physics. You and I ended up going um, a lot further, a lot faster mm -hmm. than we would have if we had had a whole class. It was pretty intense. It was, it was people used to come into my office and look at the whiteboard. And say, oh my God, what are you doing in here? And I would say, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I think I think we had a couple of classes where we just worked through one problem, problem for yes. an hour and a half. And like there might be like we might have made a mathematical error like in the second step, and we'd have to go back. Would you go back time. fifteen steps to find it? And and like with with physics that advanced, there's always like. 200 different ways to solve each problem. Yeah, but that was really great too. Yeah. Because right? you can explore all the different ways. And sometimes you would come in and I'd say, okay, let's look at problem number whatever. And you would do it a certain way. And I would say to you, that's totally correct. And here's another way to do it. And let's look at it from this end. Mm -hmm. And that's really fun too. With the close contacts that you have with faculty, um, it's just like, it's just a much more involved and rewarding experience than 
coursework that I've done in other formats, mm -hmm. that there's a really fundamental difference between having an assignment and having a project. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference between conference work and a lot of work that you encounter elsewhere. Like the Newton project wasn't something that you gave to me to, to do. Right. Um, it was something that I wanted to do that you helped me with and you asked questions that guided the project. Um, and I think that that's what's really wonderful and that's the opportunity that you don't want to miss. The Science Division awards the Kogan Prize, um, named after Edward Kogan, who was a faculty member here in mathematics. When we give the award every year, we look both for academic excellence, that's sort of our prime um, criteria, and then we mm -hmm. also look for people who have been um, active in the community. So we were super excited to award you the Kogan Prize. So you've done you know, advanced work in biology, you've done advanced work in physics, um, and you've also done so many things around campus, being on search committees for um, faculty positions, working for the admissions office, and just generally being our, um, <laughs> our science ambassador <laughs> yeah. across campus. For two years, I was a tour guide here on campus, um, and I always made a really big point to talk mm -hmm. about the sciences and to talk up the sciences. I really changed over to science primarily because the program is so fantastically intimate and you get so much individual attention. It's really flexible and you do get these opportunities that aren't available elsewhere. My, my sort of coming to the science was very much a process and I think that it was a process that a lot of students on the tour could sort of identify with. They could sort of see the starting point um, and sort of open their mind from like maybe saying that the sciences aren't something that they want to consider to starting to sort of look at them as something that is interesting and valuable and fun.